Hi, praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Maurice Gashero, Pastor Jubilee Christian Church, Hika Road, and I'm welcoming you to this Sunday's Command Your Morning. We've been talking about the great salvation. What did Jesus accomplish? What makes the salvation so great? So today we bring something that's very, very uh, pertinent, relevant, and something that is also very, very powerful. We talk about healing, healing, that in what he did, he not just take away sin, bring reconciliation, but he also paid the price for bodily healing, physical healing. So you need to understand that as the enemy had uh, brought people into slavery to sin, the other thing he did is that he oppressed many. He oppressed people through sickness and disease. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, the word of God says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power where who went about doing good, healing all who are oppressed by the devil. So you see, sickness is an oppression. Sickness is a bondage. The Bible says there was a woman who was bound for 13 years. You know, she walked around bent over because of a bondage. All right? So you see, the gospel um, uh, of Jesus Christ tells us what sickness really is. is an oppression of the enemy. If it is an oppression of the enemy, then what Jesus did on the cross must deal with it, must factor in the aspect of sickness. If salvation has to be great, if salvation has to be complete, if salvation has to touch on every aspect of human life, it's important for it to also deal with the sicknesses, diseases, and the cause of infirmity. So that is what Jesus did on the cross. The Bible says on his, in his days on the earth, he went around doing good, healing those who are sick and oppressed of the devil. You look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. There was no sickness, there was no disease that was greater than his ability to deal with it, his ability to save. And the Bible says they went, then his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people. They brought to him all sick people who are afflicted with various diseases and torments. There were many people everywhere he went. There were people that were uh, uh, afflicted. So it tells us also that sickness is an affliction. Sickness is an affliction. Sickness is a bondage. Sickness is an oppression. All right? So Jesus death on the cross focused also on the body, the healing of the body of God's people. The word of God says in Isaiah, he's talking about Jesus Christ in Isaiah 53. He's talking about what Jesus is a promise of salvation. In the Amplified that we read, yeah, he says how he carried our sickness. He says, surely he has borne our griefs. And the word griefs there is sicknesses, weaknesses, distresses, all right? And carried our sorrows, that is, and our pains. He has carried our sorrows and our pains, sicknesses, and weaknesses. The Bible says also in 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, the word of God says himself, who Jesus that Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the tree. 
he bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we have been died to sin, might live to righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. The Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. So that means his suffering was designed, intended to lead to the healing of God's people. His suffering was intended to result in the liberty and freedom from the oppression, affliction, and bondage of sickness. So that is very, very important. What we see is that salvation, the great salvation, why is it great? Because within that salvation is the healing, the healing of God's people from every sickness, every kind of disease. There is nothing God cannot heal. And after this program, I'm going to pray and believe God for the healing of those that are watching us. All right? So in that great, of sal in, in that great salvation, as I said uh, two weeks ago, we see the highest level of God's love. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. So you see the motivation of God's love. The, the motivation for salvation is God's love. We see that also in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, that God has shown us his love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We have seen that the love of God is God's greatest motivation. He did what he did because of his love. Therefore, the great salvation is a representation of God's height and depth of love. What he intended for you in his love. All right? So the promise of salvation has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And it has been fulfilled just as God intended it. Just as God wanted it. What does it cover? It is able to deliver man and redeem man from every form of bondage. And it is also to able to give to people, to offer to people every gift that God intended for people to have. So what did I say? The great salvation is the means by which we were delivered from sin, from the bondage and slavery of sin. The great salvation is the means by which the curses that bound God's people were broken. Galatians 3.13, that he hung on the cross so that that curse may be broken. Because the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse. For as it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs upon a tree. So he hung on a tree, yeah, to break that curse, to deliver us from that curse, to, so that we can be broken free from the bondage, the influence of that curse. So we were broken free. So we were brought into what? Number one, the gifts of salvation is eternal life. That now we have life in Christ Jesus. That is the benefit of this great salvation. We were saved from death to, to life. We were saved from sin. Now what we have? Reconciliation. Or good standing, the right standing with God, which is called righteousness. That is what we have. There is a way that God sees us now. He doesn't see you, if you're born again, as an enemy. He doesn't see you as his enemy. He sees you as his child. He sees you as his son. He sees you as his heir. So that's very, very important. That the attitude of God towards people has changed because of the cross. He is no longer angry. The sacrifice of Christ has taken away wrath, has taken away anger. And now we are in the place of grace. We stand in, in grace, a place of favor with God, a place where we have favor with God. And that's very, very important. So what do we see? 
we see what the Christ, what the uh, salvation of Jesus Christ has accomplished for us. That in Christ, you are what the sacrifice of Christ made you, all right, and did for you. Yeah, so the, the, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ was to secure your freedom, yeah, freedom from the devil, freedom from sin. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ was to give you victory. As a believer, freedom is yours. As a child of God, yeah, for uh, a, a, a victory is yours. Receive it and by believing in Jesus Christ. If you have not believed in Jesus Christ, even you, freedom was paid for you. Victory was paid for you. Healing was taken care of by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. His intention was that you may live a life without infirmity, a life without sickness. That is why the Bible says, everywhere Jesus went, he did good. He healed all those who were oppressed of the devil. Why did he heal all? Because he never wanted any one of them sick. Because he wanted all of them whole. Bible says in Matthew, everywhere he went, they brought people. There was no qualification except that they were brought. Except that they were there. And when they were brought, they were healed. When they came to his meetings, they were healed. Why? He never wants anybody sick. He wants you healed. And therefore, the time he died on the cross for the salvation of humanity, he also died and carried the sicknesses and the diseases of the world on that same cross. So the same sacrifice for your healing is the same sacrifice for the salvation of your soul. Do not exempt yourself. Do not defraud yourself. Do not forfeit the wonderful benefits of salvation. According to Psalm, where he says, Bless the Lord, O, o my soul, and do not forget his benefits. One of those benefits is that he forgives you all your sin. The second benefit is that he heals you of all your sicknesses. Those are the benefits of Jesus Christ. Those are the benefits of salvation. These are the good things we talk about. Now realize this. You are what the blood of Jesus Christ was shed to make you. You believe in Jesus Christ. That is for you. You, be, you are what the blood of Jesus was shed to make you. Number two, number three, sorry. You are what the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was supposed to make you. When you believe in Jesus Christ, the crucifixion and the benefits of his death and resurrection, they become yours and you can enjoy them. It, they are yours for, uh, to enjoy. His death had a consequence. His death and resurrection has a consequence. And that consequence is the benefit you have. You have life. You have peace with God. Yeah, because of what Jesus died to do. He gives you victory because of his victory. You stand and live on the platform of his victory because you have faith in him. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So that's very, very important for us to note, friends. And one of those victories that Christ has given us is victory over sickness and disease, victory over infirmity. You don't have to spend your days in pain. You don't have to spend your days sick. You don't have to, uh, to spend uh, your days. You listen, uh, uh, vict I mean, sicknesses never represent the will of God. They never represent the love of God. Why does God heal? Because sickness is, is, is a misrepresentation of his nature. Yeah? Why does God heal? It's because sickness yeah, uh, 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 makes people reliant and dependent on other people. The Bible says that the blind people in the Bible, they were depending on people to lead them. The lame, there's a man in the Bible who couldn't even walk. He depended on his four friends to carry him. All right? So sickness reduces somebody to a place of depending on children, relatives, people, you know, and, and, and that's, that's not God's will. Amen. His will is that you may be able to be strong to take care of your family. Be strong to take care of your loved ones. And that is what happens. And, 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 and that's when you get healed. 
you have that strength. A sick person cannot be able uh, to be productive. The Bible says the centurion came to Jesus and said that my servant, the one who was supposed to be serving the centurion, the one who was supposed to bring, uh, to be, you know, productive, he was in the house, sleeping in, on the bed. And the centurion asked Jesus to heal him. And Jesus healed him. So he continued with productive life. And that is what, uh, 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 you know, God wants us to do. He wants us to be productive and fruitful. All right? That's why he heals people. He heals people because it is his nature to heal. Because of his love. He heals people because that is what Jesus died for. He died on the cross. He carried your sickness and diseases so that you might not need to carry them. So that you don't have to bear them in this life. You don't have to carry them in your body. And right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone that is watching this program that has been sick. Be healed in Jesus' name. Every part of your body, I pray, receive healing in Jesus' name. God wants you well. He wants to heal you. It's a benefit of this great salvation. It's a benefit of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a result of his sacrifice for you. Receive it and walk. Enjoy your life in Jesus' name so that you may enjoy a full life because of what Jesus Christ has done in Jesus' name. God bless you so much. Yeah, let us know. My name is Pastor Maurice Gashero. I want to also pray for you to be saved. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for carrying my sins on the cross. Thank you for loving me with an everlasting love. I acknowledge you and I accept you as my savior from today henceforth. Amen and amen. Father, I pray for those that have needs in their families, in their jobs. Things are not going as they should. Father, I pray that you help them. Enlighten them with what they need to do. Thank you for the solution that you offer them. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we honor you and we praise you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. God bless you so much and thank you for joining us for this uh, morning's edition of uh, uh, Command Your Morning. This has been Pastor Maurice Keshero from Jubilee Christian Church. Uh, thicker road. Until next time, God bless you so much. Amen.